to another Tech Minds video. So how can we use software defined radio without owning or having any SDR equipment connected to our computer? Well, we can use the internet. Now all around the world, various people from ham radio operators to shortwave listeners provide their SDR installations as a live feed onto the internet. Now there are many ways in which we can listen to a web enabled SDR and here are a few of them. So first we can use SDR Sharp and the built-in SPI server directory. We can also use SDR Console, which has the ability to view live and internet exposed SDR servers. Another common method would be to use WebSDR. WebSDR.org has a long list of live and exciting SDR receivers that can be viewed and listened to in the normal internet browser. Another great website that's full of online web SDRs is KiwiSDR.com. Now this site has a range of receivers located all over the world. The preference user interface is OpenWebRx, which all runs nicely in your internet browser. So why would you want to take advantage of these web enabled SDR receivers? Well, maybe you don't own an SDR receiver, or maybe you don't have the space for installing big antennas for HF. Or maybe you want to investigate satellite reception, but don't have a dish or the required hardware. Now it's not just listening to transmissions with web enabled SDRs, you can also pipe the audio into third party applications. This means that if you were to stumble across a digital transmission in DMR, for example, you could still pipe that audio into VB audio cable and then into another application like DSD plus to decode it. The same goes for all other types of digital data like FTA and Whisper. If you can hear it on the web enabled SDR and you have the right software for decoding, then there's no reason why you cannot decode it and investigate it further. So let's go ahead and have a look at the first one on the list. Let's look at SDR Sharp and how it works with its SPI server directory. Now, once you have SDR Sharp open on a computer which has internet, you can go over to the top left and in the source section, you can see a drop down menu to select SPI server network. Now, once you've selected this, go ahead and click on the little button to the right, which has three little dots. This will now open up another window showing all of the SPI servers that have allowed themselves to be shared publicly. On the left, we have a list of SPI servers and on the right, we have a map. Each dot on the map represents a SPI server location. You will notice that some dots have a different color and this is to indicate the current state of the SPI server. Green means that it's ready to accept a connection. Yellow means that it's online, but currently occupied or busy. And red means that the SPI server is unreachable. Maybe the owner has recently turned it off. Now on the left of this screen is another drop-down menu where you can select a filter. You can view all those that are ready, those that are busy and those that are unreachable. So we're going to select ready so that we can make sure all the SPI servers shown we can connect to. And once you've changed the filter, you'll notice that the left list will change and the map will now show any green dots. The map is useful if you want to target a specific country or area of the world. As we scroll down the list on the left, we can see at a quick glance the frequency range the SPI server is configured for. And if the user has set any meta information, you can also see some text regarding its location or some other personal information such as user's call sign, you know, if they're a licensed ham radio operator. So I'm going to choose the first one in this list, which appears to be over Central Europe somewhere. Once clicked, you also see some further information about this particular spy server, such as the type of antenna that's connected to and maybe even the type of STR receiver used. This metadata is all entered by the spy server owner so it might not always show you the same type of information. Now to make SDR Sharp connect to this server, all we need to do is click the blue link that starts with SDR and then an IP address like this. Now, if you're familiar with SDR Sharp, you'll notice here that it's working just as if you are connected to an SDR receiver locally. You can change modes, bands, use the plugins. In fact, you can do everything that you can normally do. You're only limited by the frequency range that the SPI server owner has configured. So next up on the list is SDR Console. Now, this also has the ability to connect to SDR servers, specifically for SDR Console. Now, this does work quite similar to SDR Sharp, but obviously it has a few different steps. So the first thing that we need to do is click the select radio button on the top left. This will open up another window where we can select the server tab. 
From here, we'll click on the definitions button and then click on search and select V3 server. Now at this point, you can enter in custom server information. So if you already know of a V3 server that you would like to connect to, then you can enter the details here. Now, if you want to search the online directory of V3 servers, then click the button which says sdrspace.com. This will now open a new window with a long list of servers. Now we're only interested in those with the green tick as these should be available for us to connect to. Now once you've found a server that you'd like to connect to, just double click on it. Click OK, select Update, click OK again, select the server from your radio list and click Connect. If the server has more than one receiver attached, you'll be prompted to choose which one to start. Select it and then click on the Start button. You should now see SDR console start to operate as if it has an SDR receiver attached to it locally. You can use all of the features of SDR console as if you was using it normally. Now another way to listen to your internet enabled SDR receivers is through your web browser. Now a well known website and provider for this webSDR.org has a long list of SDR receivers from around the world that you can connect to and listen. The great thing about these types of web SDRs is that they can support multiple users at the same time. This is because the web SDR software will normally be configured to feed the entire passband of the configured frequency range. The list of web SDRs here normally contain quite a lot of metadata, so you know what you're connecting to and what frequencies are supported. To open one of these web SDRs, just click the link on the left. This will then open the web SDR into your browser window. Now one thing to mention about WebSDR is that you have the option to run this in Java or HTML5. In my opinion, HTML5 does seem to be smoother. I've also noticed that some WebSDRs did not run at all in Chrome, so I have had to use Firefox for them to work correctly. So if you get stuck on a WebSDR that's not working for you, try another web browser like Firefox. Now next up on my list is KiwiSDR.com. Now this site provides another long list of SDR receivers placed around the world which have been web enabled. The software for choice with Kiwi SDR is based upon OpenWebRx, which is an application designed to present a nice usable interface for controlling the web SDR. Another cool feature with OpenWebRx that if configured, they can also decode digital modes such as DMR, DSTAR, DRM, NXDN, all without having any other software installed. All of the decoding is done server side and you're just presented with the decoded audio. I'll create a video on OpenWebRx in the near future as I believe it deserves its own spotlight. Let's take a look at how it works. Another cool feature with Kiwi SDR website is that a world map is also available, showing you the location of online SDR receivers. 
You can easily browse the map and click on the SDR that you'd like to receive. Now, as mentioned earlier, OpenWebRx can also decode some digital modes if configured. This particular OpenWebRx installation has DRM decoding enabled. Let's take a brief listen. So there we go, how to use software-defined radio without having a physical SDR receiver connected to your computer. And as mentioned before, if you're interested in decoding the digital transmissions and the digital modes that we find, this is also possible as long as you route your audio correctly. Just like this, decoding FTA with the audio coming from SDR Sharp, but SDR Sharp is actually connected to a web enabled SDR receiver somewhere in the world. Until the next video guys, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.